Hi, Stephen Rosell here, Senior Technical Specialist, my guy at Autodesk, and this is going to be the finish of the render setup demo where in the previous two movies we talked about the basics of creating render layers and collections and in the second part we talked about how you can modify the objects in those collections with overrides and here we're just going to show a practical example of the things that you can do with render layers and then ultimately how you can reuse those in different scenes. So let's show a, pa a practical use of the render layers. So let's actually go in and create a new layer and we'll call this our BG layer. And for the background, I'm actually going to add a series of objects that I've got called ground here, ground objects. So we'll create a collection and this will be our ground collection. And then as part of that collection, I want to grab everything that has the word ground in it. I'll use ground star, hit enter, and now we'll update that layer. And sure enough, it picks up everything from ground. So I've got one layer that contains the car. I've got another layer that contains the ground. So the thing is, right now, if I were to render these out, you can see that the ground has no concept of the car. There's no reflection. There's no bounce light. And likewise, the car has no bounce light from the ground. So what I need to do in this case is I need to create kind of an invisible version of each one of these in each layer. So what you can do is you can actually copy and paste these. So I can basically just take this layer and I can copy it. So this is the car collection. We'll copy there and then we'll go over here to the background layer and we'll paste. So now I've got car collection in both of these. So you can see if I render this layer out, it's going to render not only the ground, but the car. So here's a practical example of where an override would come in. I'm actually going to take the car and I'm going to override the primary visibility. So I'll just grab the shape node here for the car, go into the shape uh, with the car collection selected. I'm going to go into the render stats and right in here where it says primary visibility, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create an absolute override for primary visibility. That will connect to any shape node that is part of the car collection. And now what I want to do is just quickly uh, enable that from here or disable it. And now you can see that I've disabled the primary visibility of the car in the ground layer, but I'm still getting the reflection of the car. I'm just not seeing the car itself. So I would basically do the same thing over here. I would take the ground layer, we'll copy it and then we'll paste this into the car layer. And then I'll also just basically go in and do the same thing I did before where I'll take something like the, the ground here for the ground layer. I will add primary visibility. Oops, I actually did that on the wrong one. Let's undo that. You have to make sure that you're working on the right layer. So I'll grab the ground collection here and I'll right click on my primary visibility. I'll create an absolute override. And now I've done the inverse of what I did previously. So now if I turn off the primary visibility, it's going to render the car with all the effects of the ground. So you can see the ground actually reflected in the lower body of the car. So now I have the car layer, which reflects the ground, and I have the ground layer, which reflects the car. So of course, not only does the primary visibility setting affect whether it reflects or not, but it also reflects whether it casts shadows onto the other objects as well. So the last thing to talk about here is the ability to customize your render settings on a per layer basis. So when I come up to the render settings, if I double click on them here or if I launch them from up here, uh, what that will do is it will load the global settings and I can set things like the resolution and I can also set the Arnold specific parameters. So at any point I can go in and I can create custom render settings just by middle mouse dragging the render settings into each layer. And now each layer has the ability to store overrides for those render settings. So let's use the car as the first example. So we'll isolate the car layer here. We'll make that the active layer. And I'll go in and set my resolution to be a full 1080, a full HD resolution. I'll right click and I'll create an absolute override for both the height and the width. Now what I'll do is I'll go to the background layer and I'll say I want to render a lower resolution of that. So I'll switch over into a 720 resolution. And then once again, I'll just right click and say create an override there and create an override there. Now in my property editor for each one of these, I have the ability to override the width and the height. These are already set. So I have 
1920 by 1080 here. I have 1280 by 720 here. And you can see that in the render view. If I set my render to be one to one, when I render out the background layer, you can see I get this kind of moderately low resolution. When I switch over into my foreground layer, you can see it's gonna render it out at a much higher resolution. So once again, the resolution is being stored as an override per layer. So this could be applicable to any of the various attributes. So whether it's something like the file format or whether it's something like the quality settings for your various sampling factors, or it could even be something like AOVs, uh, which are basically render passes, which I'm not gonna get into in this demonstration. We're gonna have a separate movie that talks about AOVs and how to use those later. So the last thing to point out is this is all easily transferable between scenes. So I can actually take all of this and I can simply export it out. So I can just say export all and I can put these into a file and I'll just put this on my desktop and we'll call this my layers for kicks. Now what I'll do is I will go back to the original scene and what you'll see in this scene is sure enough my render layers are completely empty. If I go to file import. I can now just point directly to that JSON file that I created. There it is, mylayers.json. Open that up, and there are all my render layers. So I did it with the same scene. Uh, of course, now if I were to go in and, and render these, you can see the results. Now I have render layer for the car and a render layer for the background. This automatically gets populated based on whatever happens to be in my scene. So if I were to take the same render layer, the same render layer template, save it out and load it into another scene that's completely different but uses the same naming conventions, all of the same layers, collections, and overrides would be applied based on the population uh, from the scene itself. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how the render setup system works and also how that ties in with Arnold. Again, stay tuned for some more Arnold Maya render demos. Thanks. Bye.